They're the plane that helped win the Battle of Britain, the Spitfire that fought over the skies of Europe in the Second World War. But the iconic aircraft was also shipped to Burma in the war with Japan. And this is the start of the story to find out what happened to them. I'd like to fly one. David Cundall, a Lincolnshire farmer, spent the past 16 years trying to track them down. His belief that more than 30 in near pristine condition may still be buried in the ground. I knew the aeroplanes were there. Uh, I tracked down eight eyewitnesses. They all told me the same story. Uh, I've had professional surveys being done by the University of Leeds. I've got uh, ground radar images. Uh, everything is pointing to that we have found them. This is where he thinks they're buried, an old RAF airbase outside the capital Rangoon. Geophysicists have already spotted metal objects lying under the mud, but no one's yet certain as to whether they're the lost spitfires of Burma. What I can say is that, as well as the geophysics, we've got copious documentation, air photographs, witness statements, um, information from, uh, and, and opinions from a range of experts. Um, but as I said, in the end, I, just, I can't emphasize enough, we're going into this with no assumptions. The dig, which begins early next year, has been made possible by a thaw in relations with Burma. David Cameron's recent visit paving the way for the work to begin. But it's all being funded by a wealthy businessman from Belarus. This is once in a lifetime opportunity to participate in this, probably one of the last adventures, great adventures of of the centuries, right? It's, uh, it's Indiana Jones if, if you look at it closely, so we just jumped in. More than 20,000 Spitfires were built during the Second World War. Some have ended up in museums, but just 35 are still flying, each worth more than a million pounds. So this dig could unearth buried treasure or turn out to be an expensive wild goose chase. But they're confident of finding more to join the few still flying. Jonathan Beale, BBC News at the Imperial War Museum.